people across the road that look like you, they got their hoods up, they could be a oh, they could be a pagan, they could be someone from the other side. They mm. could have a problem with us. They could have a problem with my friend standing next to me. And we're just going to the chip shop. Yeah. But if it kicks off, it kicks off. I got mm. my knife on me and my knife's coming out and I'm gonna protect myself. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Killer Keller Podcast. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Inside the house, transmitting live technical appliances applying right now. We have a Don in the Game, an inspiration, pioneer in male development and anti-gang, aspiring young people, health, diet, nutrition, the new book. He's got it all going on at the moment, Terrell Lewis. How are we doing, my brother? Lessons, King. I'm oh, well, you know. <laughs> Really well, really well, man. You are a bit of a multi, multi-talented guy, and it's it's quite hard to pin you down. You know what I mean? It's like, how do you define? <laughs> how do you define your role? Um, love, <laughs> love, Ooh. love, love. Cold, cold. I feel cold. like that just grabs everything into one, you know. And yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plenty of it needed at the moment, and a lot to go around from the Terrell camp for real. Definitely, man. So much, so much love and healing is needed right now. Where are you in the world? Right, well, well, right now, <laughs> right now I'm in the park going for my walk. Got, got my, got my wellies on. You know, we're really jumping in puddles, getting into our inner child. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. For those of you listening or not watching, to how he's most definitely in the uh, the natural landscape. He's 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 getting it in. There's mud on the boots. There's a uh, there's uh, there's rosy cheeks, a grin. The whole thing's popping off over here. Come on, man. Blessings. I mean, we've got we've got so much we can go through. We've got so much we can delve into right here. It's actually for for a, a young man. Yo, you've you've accomplished so much in a short space of time of, of self awareness, and you know from from the, from these early beginnings to now that it must be quite a quite a trip when you think about your acclaims and all the things that you've developed through your own personal development. Yeah, you see, you know what? It's um definitely I appreciate you know I appreciate the journey, and the journey continues. You know, it, it doesn't stop. You know. Um, we continue to heal from certain wounds. We continue to heal from certain traits or whatever it is, you know, and let go of certain traits. And we continue to unlearn, you know. Mm. And I feel like it's it's definitely it's definitely just a journey, just appreciating the journey and appreciating just the, the steps. And everything's a stepping stone. And if that's helping and inspiring people along the way, you know, so more it be, you know. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that I mean, that's by far the most important thing. It's all about particularly now nowadays how you impact other other people and help them through your own experiences isn't it definitely definitely well like it's um it's important for people to share their journey and have real real organic conversations you know and um just just i feel like that helps us to kind of lift up the carpet and sweep underneath it where we can have real conversations and yeah real conversations for real people for real, for real. But it takes um, it takes a lot of experience to have a have a mindset which defers the ego from from partaking in the thing that your your mission brief is set out to be doing, you know, and the, the healing and helping of other people and the the self development of people, you know, it takes a lot of growing up internally before you can control that ego and not actually let yourself be. Do you know what I'm saying? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I'm just grateful that, you know, they they, they say um, God, you know, gives people situations who they can handle, the ones that can handle it, you know. And yeah. I'm glad that I've gone through certain barbed wire, I've gone through certain mud and certain doors that, you know, I can I can, I can can tell people coming behind or come, who's about to go through that mud, about to go through that barbed wire, like, do you know what? 
you can actually make it out. Just keep pushing, keep pushing mm. through. You might be in the midst of it right now. You might everything might be falling down around you right now, but just keep on going. Storms don't last forever. Storms oh. don't last forever, literally. Yeah, yeah. When you're in the middle of those storms, though, God, that is one hell of a shit storm. Wow, wow. But you know what? We learned so much in that storm. We learned so much. Um, you know, one of my storms was in that cell in prison when I had those four walls around me, and all I could, all I had was me. All I had was, you know, the unknown. All I had was God. You yeah. know, I, I, that's when I started picking up the Bible, like really digging deep and picking up the Bible, um, dabbling into different um, meditations, and you know, just literally trying to keep my head focused. I, I, I had nothing, you know. We need to get into this for sure, for sure. I don't want to stop you too soon into the game, but you've got the book. The book's coming out. Or the book will be out by the time this, this is out. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure that it's set at the right time. Um, last chance. Um, life life in you know within the gang system and how, how you survived it. Get, did, let's go back there. And I hope you don't mind us delving deep into what would be the con within the book context, but it'd be really good to frame it in a particular way for a lot of people that, that may not um, know about your history and how you've come to this development and this place in your life. Where did it all begin, brother? Well, going all the way back, um, it began, it began from, from a very young age, you know, um, family, um, you know, growing up with a single mother um, who was going through domestic violence and me seeing that, me experiencing that affected me a lot. Then my mum kind of escaping that and trying to get herself together, you know. Mm. Um, us moving around London to escape the violence, to escape the noise. Um, but at the same time, you know, mum always made sure I had food on, in my stomach and a roof mm. over my head, you know. So I've seen her journey as well as, um, you know, the, the experiences and of the hardships and the, the, the poverty or whatever it may, it may have been, drugs, guns, knives. Um, mm. I was exposed to that from a very young age. We escaped, we escaped, obviously, running around. Sorry, one second. Yeah, all good, yeah. Yeah, we escaped running around from the noise and then I ended up moving in with my grandparents so from one struggle hmm. to another it turned out to be I moved into an estate which was heavily active with gangs um, heavily active with drugs and heavily active with just just madness at the hmm. time um, but also a community also a, a, a place of fun you know a place of just Enjoy, enjoying the, you know, it was a, we, I had so much fun. Yeah. I, I, I grew up, I had, I had a childhood. I played games, I played football. I, you know what I mean? I had, yeah. I had support from my family, my grandparents and my mom and stuff. But from the, from the trauma of me being exposed to so much as a youngster, mm. then moving into Mitesfield with my grandparents, you know, there was peace inside the household. But as soon as I stepped out of there, you know, it's either I play football, I play games, or I'm exposed to the corners of people hanging around and, mm. you know, just, just, just hanging around, just hanging yeah. around at the time. I'm but at the same time, a big community, big I'm, community. Yeah, I get it. It's the balance, isn't it? It's, it's actually, it's, it's a strange juxtaposition. How yeah. exposed were you? Or how rather, actually, how vulnerable for your age, you know, was there a sense of grooming with some of the, the the characters that you were encountering from that that other side, the darker side of of your childhood? Was it was it were you that was it that level of impressionable um, uh, conversation and um, behavior that was coming from those kind of characters? You know what. It was also, as much as there was madness and there was gangs on the estate, the, there was olders that played football with us. The older guys on the estate played football with us. They, okay. they made sure we were well. They made sure we, they, like, they, if, they went, if they were going chip shop, or they, they come back with loads of chips and made sure 
you know, all the youngsters in the estate had chips or whatever it was, you know. Got you, okay. Even to bringing us JD Sports and buying trainers, you know what I mean? So at yeah. the time, it was it was a whole big community. It was a whole big family, but at the same time, there was gang activity. There was protecting the estate. There was protecting themselves. And that came with the knives. That came with the guns. And I was exposed to that. As much as we played football with them, after that football, they, you know, they're... they're they're, they're on guard. Mm. Security defences up, you know. And I, I saw the changes. I saw the shifts in the attitude from playing, you know, runouts or knockdown ginger or whatever it was to, right, there's, there's pagans on the block or there's, a, there, there, there's just been a shooting down the road just on the side of the estate. And I'm just like, well, this is really happening. This is really happening. And yeah. me, see, me seeing this, me hearing this, it was frightening at first, but then it kind of just, it raised something in me that I, I wanted to be a part of, you mm. know? Um, I became a product of my environment. You know, I, I could play the games, I could play the football. I wanted to play football. I wanted to be a footballer, mm. but I also wanted to be of the estate. I wanted to be of the hood. I wanted to pa be patriotism. Like patri patriotism to the cause, knowing that you had these personal moments, you know, in games and sports and things that were, very community driven you know friends yes yes wow. huge sense of community in Mikesville growing up but at the same time again you know it's, it's, it's passed down you know a lot of this is passed down a lot of a lot of the it's a lot, a lot of yes yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's bloodline literally you mm. know they hate that person so you hate that person you know they hate that area so you hate that area yeah some of the some some of the some of the beef that was going on, they, they probably didn't even know what was going on when we were young. But growing up into it, it's just like you know what, they're the other side. Yeah, they they're not with us. And that vendetta is is passed on. In a, I guess Chinese whispers is the wrong analogy, but if you're passed on secondhand information going down the generations before you know you. I guess you kind of don't even know entirely yourself why you got beef with a specific person or group. It come like that at, at the time. It come like that at the time. Yeah. But you know what? At, at the same time, they got their story. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it's just like, you don't know who who got killed in that or whatever it was. It's just like, you, you don't know the actual history of that. But at the yeah. same time, you're just living in it. And you're, when you live in it, you're just going to, you're going to be staunch in that. Mm -hmm. You're going to stand up. And then now you're living in it. Now you're a part of it. Now you're the other side to the other side. And now you got to protect yourself. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mirror. It's, it was one big mirror. It's like Brixton and Peckham. Why, why, do you, why do we hate each other? We look like each other. You know what I mean? We wear the same tracksuits. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, we, we, we are actually mirroring each other and we just hate each other. It's just like, I, I, did, I, never, I, ne I never understood it at first. Mm. And then coming out of it, it was just like, wow, it was really lost. It was, it was generational. This was passed down. I, I can understand. It was like a hypnotism. It was, it, was, it was a weird one. It was a weird one. But getting out, it was, it's a relief. It was a relief. I mean, that's, yeah, that's actually crazy. It's, it's, it, as somebody that obviously, as you can probably tell, <laughs> this, is, this is, you know, I'm, I'm very much uh, intrigued and... Um, just getting a, getting a more finer understanding, and I think a lot of people that are you know that that check out this podcast, you know that it, it's it's very much like that. It's just getting the getting that understanding and building up like a, a, a kind of more of a closer relationship and understanding of what 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 happens within those fields and in those worlds. And you must have had like loads of examples or times where you were going into situations with people that, well, yourself didn't even know about what you were getting yourself into. You didn't have conversations like this popping off. You were going into these things kind of in part blind, but extremely patriotic to the fact that your mates are, or your mates have been involved in it, or it's going down and your mates in trouble. You You kind of just... You must have had loads of encounters like that. 100%. You're going to protect yourself at all costs, you know. 
Yeah. Whether it's someone that you told that you got a problem with, or you someone who's got a problem with who's your mate, or you're walking down the street and a bunch of boys across the road are looking at you and your boys, and it's just like, right, what what is going to go down? The energy shifts. The energy shifts in the in the in the air. Mm. And straight away, you're in defense. You're in defense mode, and you're going to protect yourself at all costs. Whether mm. that's with a knife, with a gun, whatever it is, you're going to protect yourself. Can I ask you from a, from, you know, because there'll be young people watching this as well and listening to this as well. What, what are, first of all, what are the triggers? I mean, obviously, yeah, if you see a group of lads coming down from one end of the road and you're on the other end and you're clearly not in the same hood, uh, what are the triggers from a, from an emotional point of view? And in turn, what are the solutions to prevent it? That, that animosity and that like that shift you talk of? Well, I would say there's a shift of energy. We can't mm. ignore it. Any young person that's on the streets or even off the streets, you could you don't even have to be involved to, to feel the energy shift. Mm-hmm. And it's just like something inside you has, there's, a, there's like an alarm that goes off and it's just like, yo, red alert, vigilant. You have to stay vigilant at this time. Anything could go down. Anything can go off. You don't know what's going to go off. You don't know if them people are going to cross the road and try and ask you for your phone. You don't know if that person's going to cross the road and ask you for your Pokemon cards. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And it was just, it was literally, it was like, you don't know. And you're, you're going to protect your Pokemon cards. You're going to protect your shinies and your Pokemon cards. You know what I mean? You ain't getting yeah. my shiny. You ain't getting my phone. But then growing up, you become the bad boy. You become the... The, the guy you become the, the 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 ego and now you are the guy that shifts the energy because you're the one who's crossing the road asking for the Pokemon cards you're the one who's asking for your phone and I'll give you your sim card back do the you know what I mean just, yeah. it was just a, it yeah it was how but how do we how do we heal from that is it definitely is the question and I feel like before before change there needs to be acknowledgement there needs to be acknowledgement. There's an acknowledgement of, you know, that person. Of course, you have to look, not, not only gang members, you, the energy would shift hmm. back. You know, you would, um, your energy would shift if, if you see a police car. Yeah. And then they're, they're, they're not even stopping. They're just going past and it, the, yeah. the energy just shifts. And it, it, it's that, that's the way I can describe it. You see a police car go past, it's a whoop. Oh, they're not for us. A light hmm. helicopter, oh, Oh, it's not for us. But people across the road that look like you, they got their hoods up. They could be a oh, they could be a pagan. They could be someone from the other side. They mm. could have a problem with us. They could have a problem with my friend standing next to me. And we're just going to the chip shop. Yeah. But if it kicks off, it kicks off. I got mm. my knife on me and my knife's coming out and I'm gonna protect myself. Uh, and how how fatal can a simple, like you say, a simple trip to the chip shop be? You know, oh. <sighs> there, we we when we used to go chip shop, we never used to go chip shop empty-handed. You know, um, so what, was just, the, what was the heaviest weapon weaponry y- y- you would carry to, to to something as like simple as a, as a you know go and get some chips? I'll go. Well, we'll go to. I'll go chicken and chip shop. We'll, I'll, I'll bring. A, I'll bring a gun with me sometimes. Do you know what I mean? It was that. It was that. It was normal. But that that was because I knew in depth where we were, and who wow. we were, and yeah. just to go to the chip shop was a preparation period before going to the chip shop. It wasn't just oh yeah I'm going to the chip shop. Nah, nah. You, 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 going to the chip shop with nothing is like wearing no clothes. Like you're naked. At that time, mm-hmm. I know it's hard to even think. Like it, it's hard to even. It doesn't even make sense mm. to certain people, but. I'm glad that I can come out of that and be able to have a conversation like this on here and have a real conversation. Mm. Because not only have I wore that T-shirt, I wore that balaclava and those leather gloves, so I get it. Mm. I get I get why you would go to the shop with a gun or a knife. I get why you 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 would you would wear a bulletproof vest or a knife proof vest. I I I get it. Do you know what I mean? I get yeah. it. Yeah. And it's 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 deep. It's deep. It's it's it, there's so much going on in the brain at that mm. time, you know? And it's, there's so, there, again, so much healing that needs to take place, but 
again, before change, there needs to be acknowledgement that you know what, I don't want this life. Yeah. This life ain't this life ain't leaving me leading me nowhere positive. This life ain't leading me nowhere to peace, to joy, mm. to happiness, mm. to stillness and calm. This life ain't leading me nowhere. So yeah. I have a choice. Or do I have a choice? Do I understand? Yeah, well, that's true. That's tr- and it's funny because if it? we don't know what choices, we can't make choices. <laughs> you if you don't, I mean? yeah, we yeah. Just, if you, you know, if you're not versed in it, if you're not versed in it, then how are you supposed to know? It's true. And we're just so you just live day by day. Going to the chip shop with a gun or a knife is normal. Walking down the road with a knife in your shoe is normal. Going to football practice with uh, with a machine or a, 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 a kitchen knife in my bag with my football boots normal because I had one foot on the pitch and one foot in the state mindset. Do you know what I mean? And it was wow. It, I wanted to be a footballer, but again. Yeah. Not in a not in a mad way, but I'm glad I never became a footballer because I wouldn't be able to write a book. I wouldn't have a book coming out. That's right. But now I've got a book coming out and now footballers can read my book. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like a lot of footballers even who made it out, bless them, you know, because mm. a lot of footballers from the state, one of my boys I talk about in the book, Zavon Hines, he was rolling with us on the streets. He yeah. became a footballer for West Ham. He got out. He became a footballer for West Ham, became for the first team of West Ham, superstar player, ended up playing for England. Do you know what I mean? He yeah. needs his he needs his story pushed out. For there. sure. And 100%. it's just like there, there's so many stories out there. There's so many people that got out at the right time. And then I'm there's ch- some people that's laying in the grave right now, or some people's laying uh, sitting in prison for the rest of their life. Yeah. Oh shit, yeah. One chance as a book. It's like stories, stories to this effect. It's it's hard to quantify, like the, and I, and I think this is why books are important. It because you know as as me growing up, I used hip hop. I used that as the the news. You know what I mean, like. Go to drum and bass rave, you know, that's the that's the nightlife. But when it comes to news, you're listening to hip hop. Yeah. And the narrative of that, particularly from an American point of view, it, it, it can be decorated in a real kind of cowboys and Indians way that glorifies a certain aspect to the point that it kind of trivializes it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Um, it doesn't make the it doesn't make the subject matter any realer, any any emotionally charged and, and 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 appreciative as the listener but because 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 of the narrative sometimes it it needs a different angle and i think from a british point of view from a brixton point of view the the the, the, the reality of what you went through is extremely different and it's it's super important that people const, con, continue pushing that that fresh narrative and and tell their story because particularly for a lot of young people now that didn't have the 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 radio station of hip-hop some of them feel like it's really hard to find a way out and it's hard to and especially in a in a nowadays everything needs to be done in eight seconds or else i'm bored kind of (laughs) kind of mindset you've got to show people like this this really happened it happened like this, and this is it's almost like giving them coordinates, you know what I mean? You can get out. You can get out. And that's why I continue to do what I do. For the last 10 years, I've been planting seeds, you know. Um, whether it was, you know, my gym with the with the Brixton Street gym, um, just pushing positivity, grabbing young people, having conversations with them. Do you know who was once in my boots? Who once wore the leather gloves that I wore, the balaclava that I wore, you know? So the, the ones that's in depth in it now, hmm. you know? And having conversations with them, even today, like I had a conversation with one of them today, do you know what I mean? And it's just like, hmm. that boldness where you have to say, do I want a future? And it's not overnight. The change is not overnight. I speak a lot about it in the book. It's not overnight. It's not if I want to be a good guy now, that's it. What? The things you did then yeah. is today's problem. Yeah. You can't be you can't be you can't be a gang member 
trying to stab people or, you know, having fights with people or whatever it may be to just saying, my, my hands up, I'm, I'm, that's it. No. Mm. It's, 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 it's a process. It's a mm. process of you letting go. It's a process of you leaving that, 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 that gun to the side or leaving that knife to the side or, do you know what I mean? Or taking that balaclava. Of, it's all a process. And yeah. if you can just kind of just start the process, push that domino of like, Rod, you know what? I need to go. I really need to go or I'm going to end up dead or I'm going to end up but I'm prison was. Mm. It's, literally, it's, it's a life or death. It's life or death. It's yeah. totally up to people if they want to leave or not. There's a, there's a dopamine level that rises when, when, a, when fights are about to happen or yeah. you got beef or whatever it is or you're making music videos. I yeah. get it. I get it. I hear you. But then it's, it's all fun and games until people make, make it their time and effort and uh, you their main focus yeah. to get. Yeah. Until people are camping outside of your house inside a bush waiting for you and your mum to come out to go shopping. It's not a, it's, it's all fun and games until then. And it's real. It's really real. But nowadays, it's, oh, yeah, all of this, there's loads of knife crime. There's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm so glad I'm not out here right now with all this knife crime going on. I'm mm -hmm. so happy. I'm mm -hmm. so happy. Because where I'm from, you can't take a knife out on me. And and that's that's not not in not in no glo sorry not in no glorifying way, hmm. but pulling a knife out at that time where we, what we were involved in, you get yourself killed. Hmm. Man, so right now with everyone with knives, it's, it's there's a lot going on. Everyone's just it's it's like people's got swords and stuff now. It's just like. Wow, there's a there's a lot there's a lot going on, and I feel like it's social media has glamorized it. Social media, like hip, um, whether it's hip hop or rap or whatever, what what other all the music that's out here is glamorizing. A yeah. lot of it's glamorizing, but they don't it, tell yeah. you about they don't tell you about the sleepless night. No, no, no. The 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 the, 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 the message has been distorted somewhat. I get you. 100%. And you, I know what you're saying about the uh, intention of the MC and the rappers, and and I, I think, yeah. And again, you know, I come from an old school, you know, '90s hip hop background. As as a teenager, that's what I was listening to, and I would hear still you'd hear certain rappers say, "Hey, listen, be careful as an MC, because what you say as an MC, people take it literal. People take that shit literal." Hundred percent. 100%. So when you got, when you got, when I'm there and I've got like, I'm riding my pedal bike and I've got Uncle Murder in my ears, you know, I'm listening to Uncle Murder, I'm riding on my, on my push bike. I'm not hearing nothing about roses and, you know, Rosie and Jim or nothing like that. You know what I mean? I'm hearing shoot, stab, protect yourself, this, that. What am I drumming to my ears? Yeah. What, am I, what, 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 what is this, what is this diet that I'm on? Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, it's real. It's, it's really, it's really happening. Mm. It's, it's, it's really happening out here. And it's just like, I, I, I was, I was, where was I walking down the road the other day? I, a young, a young boy walking past, had headphones in. I hear him just rapping some lyrics and he looked like a good boy. Like mm. a really, really good boy. It's just like, yeah. But he, he Next week, he could be he could become the new shooter of the block. He could yeah. be he could become the um, the new per, the new head gang member because well, of well, like what he's drilling into his spirit. Like a self fulfilling prophecy, you you talk it till you become it. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Wow, you are what you think about, it, man. You become what you think about. <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, this is something. That, but hey, let's yo, Terrell, man, this is grown man talk. <laughs> <laughs> this is some great. This is great man talk. <laughs> it's real, and it's just like you got people like you know, thirty, thirty-one, my age, and it's like they're still out here on the road. You got they got olders that's still out here glamorizing the streets, and it's just like I hear you. There's some of them they don't know what else to do. That's all they know. Yeah, that's all they know. There's some people stuck in the box of they don't know how to leave. 
They don't, mm. they don't know what choices, so they can't make the choice. Yeah. But all I ask is those young people to really look at look at those 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 olders or look at those people that they feel like is living a glamorous lifestyle, living a gangster lifestyle, and really look at them and really ask yourself, am I inspired? Mm. Am I inspired by that person's actions? Is that person's actions going to help me 20 years down the line from now, 10 years down, or is it going to make an impact of, you know, an impact of negativity, an impact of wounds, open mm. wounds, whatever it is. Is, 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 is this going to help me moving forward? Ask yourself if you want a future. Mm. Because this, the, the road thing, it, it's got a lifespan to it. Just, just hanging on that, 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 that statement there. Do you think, because there's a lot of factors to consider when you're a certain age, uh, you know, it's where your family have, have, have you know, have settled, you know, demographically. And sometimes when you're, when you're lacking confidence in certain areas of your, you know, your young um, adult life and your family ain't about to move out of a situation anytime soon. Some of the, some of this stuff can potentially be easier said than done. Like, how old were you though when you? Do you reckon what what age would you have been where you could have made a, a decision like that and b- been able to take yourself out of a situation, taking into account your your family unit, your friends you had, you knew you had to do some shedding. When is a good age for that? A good age is a good age is to not even get involved in it. To be honest with you, yeah, a good age, honestly. Um, you know, and if you're inside it, it's just trying to find a way out, trying to trying to try trying to find peace mm. in that situation. Because there, there's there's nothing but peace. There there there's there's no peace. There's no peace on the streets, man. No, there's no peace. You're always looking over your back. You're always looking out for people that you don't like people's yeah. always looking for you and looking at l- looking for you know looking mm-hmm. to do you something yeah you're always looking for the next paycheck you're you're also also trying to have a a, a, a relationship with girls or whatever it is are going to um, you know what i mean dating or whatever and now you can't go dating without a, a machine or a knife on you or you can't go to that girl's because you don't know if she's gonna set you up or whatever it is mm. there's a lot that comes with it a lot that comes with it and you have to ask yourself is there peace on the street no no there might be temporary you know but that there's temporary things that can you know get you buzzing but it don't last it don't last. When all the noise is done, when all the business is done, you're at home on your pillow looking at the ceiling. Can you really say to yourself, I'm satisfied with this, with this journey that I'm on? This, this, this. And now it's like a lot of people, they, they want to be involved in the gangs. They just, you know, you, you want to be. You want to be. It's just like, like I hear you. It looks glam. It looks, it looks, it looks gold. It looks brilliant. It look like do you know what I mean? At that mm. age, I, I hear you. Like it, it does look gold. It does it does look, you know, the the cars, the the girls, the attention, the the name, the status. Mm. But then the people that's been through that, they're not gonna they don't tell you the, the ins and outs of it. Mm. You they don't tell you the ins and outs of it. They're not gonna tell you the the harsh shit. They're not gonna tell you the the sleepless nights, they're not gonna tell you the depression, the anxiety. The, the paranoia they're not going to talk about this mm. but then the young people are looking at it now they, now now it's easy to groom these young people yeah easy to, to be into like, prospect oh, yeah, he's like, ah 100% 100% you know what he's that young person over there he's got potential he's going to be one of my gang members I once I once done that I once recruited youngsters and said Roger you know what you got potential to be a bad boy you got potential to you got a potential to do damage. And it's scary to even think like, wow. Rob, T, you actually fought like that. And it makes me sick in a sense, but at the same time, that's why I give so much back to my community because I feel like I, f- I can't even swear. <laughs> um, that's why I feel like I give so much back because I, I, I damaged a lot. I, I, mm. I created so much toxins before. And that's why our people ask, well, why do you do this? Why do you do that? 
because I feel like I need to heal the community I once damaged. So I need to heal the people that I once damaged. So let me just interject there. Why, why do people ask that question? Why do you do? Because a, a lot of people ask. They, well, a lot of, my, a lot of, I don't know, like uh, people that don't understand it, maybe. People that don't really have the conversations of the, you know, the gangs and they don't really right. understand what's going on. Maybe those people. Well, why? What, 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 why do you um, push so much on the community? What, what is your inspiration? My ins- and, then, and then the conversation flows into, you know, my inspiration is, is that. My inspiration is my past and what I've, da- what I've done and what I've dabbled in and, and the, 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 the negative I've pushed out there, the narrative I've pushed out there. Mm. That's why I do. That's why I push hard. That's why I stand for what I stand for. And I stand boldly in it. And just luckily for me, what helped me to get out of the streets was boldness. Mm. I left because I wasn't, I, was, I wasn't just a follower, a sheep. I grew into be a gang member, heavily involved. And my whole thing was, I don't want to be a gang member no more, but I'm not a dickhead. Mm. It was that, it, honestly, it was that. That's really heavy, and I get I, you. I'm not a gang member, but I'm not a dickhead. So yeah. please, leave me alone. God, that, that must that, have been that a hard... Was the energy that I came with. And it was like, I knew that, do you know what? Going to church on the estate, I still had enemies. So do you know what? I'm going to go to church and I'm going to have my machine on me, cocked under the chair, just in case anyone comes in there because I'm going to protect myself. Yeah. I ain't going out today. I might be praising and worshipping. I might be reading the, the Bible. I might be listening to positive words from the pastor, but I ain't going out today. Because I don't mm. know if God's going to protect me today. Yeah, 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 do you know yeah. what I mean? And it was, it was just that real. But at the same time, it was the boldness that helped me to say, do you know what? I'm got, I, I want to change. I want a future. I want a life. I want a family. Mm. Think, it, think it until you become it, essentially. Do you... Um, I mean, even by the sounds of this, just going back to what you were saying about the the time in which it takes to reform, to, to, to become the, remove yourself from th- these influences and that circle and that, that, that area of your life. I mean, if you don't mind me saying, you know what I mean? Like there's stages to, cause I've talked to different criminals as well on, on the podcast and, you know, if, I'm sure nobody will mind me saying, you know, when you're institutionalized in jail or you or you've you've been part of a gang and and situations, you can hear you can hear by the conversation that the value of the conversation, how far mentally you can hear how far and whereabouts on their journey they are. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, you you you're so articulate with your um, with your vision of yourself and the stories that you have. It, it it certainly feels like you've been you've been honing in on this becoming for a long time, and then you know when you take the gym and you take all these other things to consider. I mean, that that must have been one hell of a journey, bro. Well, it's it's, it's like a it's like a whole movie, and you know we continue to continue, so we can continue. You know, literally, that's that's all all, all I can do. Literally, that's all I can do. Uh, I I continue to heal from my past. I continue to heal from certain things. And, you know, I also, you know, appreciate the journey. I appreciate where I've come from because it's it's, 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 it's helped me along the way of who I am today, you know? Yeah. It's helped me to be able to speak and, you know, yeah. Really speak to young people. I really have conversations about this. And this is not no secondhand information. This is, it's real. It's mm. real. Like, you can die. You can go to prison. Like, it's real. Mm. Like, it's, it's, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's, it's real. And it's sad. It's sad because it's, I see so many people in the same position I was once in. And I look and I'm just like, yo, you, you need to change it around. Yeah. You need to change it around. And if that starts with a conversation, you know, let it start with a conversation. For sure. For sure. Um, what was now I remember Brixton uh, you know going to you know Dog Star Cold Harbour Lane you know and I'm I'm 
pretty certain not a huge amount has changed apart from the prices have got expensive and the gentrification's kicked in. But <laughs> it, Brixton was very a very different time when you were in the mix, right? Give us a snapshot of your everyday life. Give us a snapshot of like you, you know, you in Brixton in the gang of a of an average day. The average day, wow. There's a lot I tap into in the book. <laughs> yeah, I got you now, man. Yeah. There's a lot I tap into the book. We're going to have to read the book, you know, literally. They're going to have to let the people read the book. But you know what is, what we spoke on about, I feel like people is going to be listening to this and they're, it's going to, you know, they're going to create something in their mind. They're going to, there are a lot of pictures, a lot of visuals are going to yeah. come up in their mind and they, they're going to be able to see it because it's a real conversation for real people. So those of ears, let them hear, you know? Ooh. And it's just like, we... Brixton is definitely changed. The gentrification, you know, we got a lot of, um, we got a Premier Inn in Brixton right now. Yeah, we got Dang. a new Premier Inn. <laughs> Outside. But, you know, there's cheese, there's wine, there's it. Do you know what? Brixton's up. It's, it's, it's up in. There's a lot going on in Brixton, on the high street. Yeah. On the high street. It looks beautiful. It looks great. Yeah. I'm in it. I mean, but you there's know. not a lot of work done in the communities. In That's the, the problem. Yeah. The youth clubs are closed down because there's no funding. But the high street looks good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like, I'm glad that this book's coming out that I get to have conversations like this on podcasts or whether it's the news or, you know, and I get to talk about some real stuff. I get to talk about, you know, where are the youth clubs? Where are the youth clubs that I used to go to? Because that mm. used to help me a lot. That used to keep me away from the noise a lot. Hell that used yeah. to help me a lot. You know what I mean? And there's no funding for these youth clubs. There's no, there's no support. There's mm. no... Everything's getting closed down because there's no resources. There's, there's no people in believing in these people. I don't know what it is, but, you know, something needs to change. Something yeah. needs to change. Something there needs to be, there needs to, definitely needs to be impact in certain areas. If mm -hmm. there's not, things will continue. They will continue. And a lot of things don't get reported. I mean, look, just by default, in conversation, as an example, you said, yo, even though I was going to church and going somewhere, maybe not the youth club, but you were going somewhere to change your life, I was still packing. You know what yep. I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure there's... God knows how much going on that is not being documented, not being on the news, not being, there's no spotlight on it. And mm. I don't know what it takes for like the government, the councils to wake up and stop shutting down certain youth schemes, shutting down places where kids can go to help remedy that if the, if the, if the problem isn't in, in their periphery. You know what I mean? It's really hard to get them engaged with this as a as a real social problem. We continue to shake the tree. Yeah. You know, we continue to shake the tree. And we continue to shake it until it until things change. We continue yeah. to shake it so we can so the so people they're like, Well, what's going on? Why is that tree shaking? And then yeah, the attention's there and it's like, yeah, that's why. There's so many people in communities doing amazing work. Uh, so many people that's doing amazing work without getting paid and, you know, stopping yeah. a lot of young people from committing crimes or going to prison or actually yeah. getting themselves killed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hats off to them. They, they don't have a social media platform. They don't have a, they don't, they don't, um, they don't have um, this, what, whatever it is. They don't yeah. have the resources. They don't have the people to get that out there, but they just continue to do what they do because they believe in it and it comes from the heart. When the cameras are off and there's no microphones, they're really doing it. When the cameras yeah. are off and the microphone's off, when I'm away from this podcast, I'm really having conversations of, you know, growth and healing and, you know, transformation. Yeah. You know, because it's a, it's, a, it's a journey. This is, this is not no, this, yeah, this is, this is not no joke. We, we really out here. Like I said, yeah. for the past 10 years, I've been planting seeds. I've been planting seeds and it's a blessing that, you know, one of these seeds can blossom and a book's come out of it. You know what I mean? And I get to yeah. tell my story. I get to not only, this is, this is the book of many, you know, I want to, yeah. I want to be able to talk about not only gangs now, you know, talk about, you know, healing from, you know, thoughts or depression or anxiety on every day to day life. Do you know yeah. what I mean? 
suicide thoughts or whatever it is, mental health. I run a program called The Man Talk. We um we work with we That's we right. run a program just for men, just for men, mental health, um just just growth, yeah. mind and body. Uh we had a little bit of technical difficulty, but he's back in the room, costume change. Hold tight. We're here, we're here, <laughs> we're back. We're back. As, as was, brother, you were talking about man talk um, and the, the exercising of uh, of a catalogue of books that that you have in mind. No, nah, definitely, man. Um, you know, obviously, I got the one chance. You know that that kind of brings everyone back and kind of just kind of gets used to Terrell Lewis, the story behind mm. the person. Now, you know, the person who's of transformation, the person who overcomes certain obstacles and hurdles, you know what I mean? And that's, I think it's important to go back sometimes and, you know, take the people on the journey. But there's more, there's more, you know, the journey continues to continue, you know? And like I said, it will be amazing to do more books, you know, that's the plan. Um, And I'll just leave that in the universe's hands to to manifest and, and just see what pops up, you know, Books on mental health, books on, you know, fitness, calisthenics. For sure. Cali meditation, do you know what I mean? Just whatever it is, it's just just, just growth, just better in the stuff. It's kind of crazy because, you know, you, you the, the, there's an energy, obviously, about you that, that leads to these things coming to fruition. Uh, like, you know, the, the street gym, you know, that in itself is no mean feat. Do you know what I mean? That's an <laughs> undertaking. You know, that, that's not just throwing it up into the universe. That's like, okay, I, you you must have formatted or put together some sort of plan of formation team you'd need to help build this. Th- th- that is one element of your career as stands. That's no mean feat, man. How did how did that even come about? Well, wow, the street gym. Um yeah. Came about when I come out of prison, you know. Um, but when I come out of prison, I remember going to, I remember going to a, one of the mainstream gyms um, in Brixton and asked how much it is to get in the gym. I wanted to train for the day. They told me I had to pay direct debit. I was a bit confused of what they were talking about. I was like, direct debit. I don't really do the. And they, and they explained, yeah, you've got to pay monthly. And I was like, right, I'm not on all of that. I'm not on all this card thing, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm coming from a life of keeping money under my bed. Yeah, you know. So I was just like, you know what? Let me just work outside. Let me go and train outside or whatever it is. So I remember going to a local kids' playground in, um, just on the outskirts of my school. It was called Red Park. Right. And like a kids' playground, but it was a abandoned kids' playground. So all the swings were tied up. It was a you know, rubbish everywhere. It was just a lot of broken down stuff in there that needed mm. like but and now I, I remember I, I just used that place as my go to, you know, away yeah. from the noise, away from the state, away from the area. And I used to go there like one once a day, twice a day, three times a day, depending on how I felt, you know. Mm. That was my place of meditation. You know, mm. that was that was my place of that 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 was my place of just. Oh, one second, brother. I just my camera's just gone. I don't know what's happened there. Hold on. All good. Sorry about that, brother. I was, uh, never done, never done that before. So it's ghost to the machine. Yeah, as was well, sorry, brother. No, all good. No, that was my place of meditation. You know, um, place my go-to. Yeah, I used to go with my BlackBerry. I used to put it on the slide, angle it so it made a bit more. You know, when you angle the phone in a way where it just echoes off the slide. Yeah. Yeah. Literally <laughs> playing my music, vibes in. My time to do pull-ups. I only could do four pull-ups at the time. I used to do press-ups. I used to do handstands. And I used to just work out. And that was my place of meditation, my place of way. And um, yeah, man, from there, I done a YouTube video there. And it got a couple thousand views. People were interested in me working out in the playground. Started seeing comments about people wanting to come and come to the park and train. I was thinking, you're not coming to my park. You're not coming to my meditation. Yeah. But this is my spot. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm like that. I'm like that too. I don't like any. I don't like this whole. You know. I, yeah. I, what's going on here? Yeah, I like solo missions, me. 
Definitely. <laughs> but, you know, from there, I went to a park called um, Kennington Park. Just, um, it's, in, it's in South London. I went to Kennington Park and I started holding sessions there. Well, not sessions, where I was just holding a little vibe every Saturday where people would just come and just, come and just get involved. God. I just thought, you know what? If this is helping me, if, if I couldn't get in a gym because I didn't know about direct debit and I didn't really F with the bank accounting, then maybe, maybe people are in the same position. Maybe people ain't got the money to attend these commercial gyms who's charging 50, 60 per month. That's right. Let, maybe let me, let, let me open up this, 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 this Saturday for them to come and join and learn when I'm learning. And, um, yeah, just started the little sessions and people started to come down. It, it jumped from 10 people to 20 people. And I was thinking, right, it's getting a bit too many people in the park. It's not enough, not enough pull up bars there. So I remember I was moving to Brocco Park, a bigger park. And uh, Brocco Park is off Fern Hill. And mm -hmm. uh, we was there, it was like 30 people every Saturday, 40 people. So we had about 100 people in the park, um, guys and girls. And so many people were there, wow. so many people. Um, from there, the council and the police was thinking, <laughs> oh, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, started, um, they started to send police in their cars to come and just sit and watch what was going on because they didn't understand why so many people was in one place, especially so many young people. Mm. From all different backgrounds, nationalities, um, colours, religions, wherever it was, all together. And to them, uh, uh, they, they said they thought it was a, like some sort of fight club. And it was like, no, we just get together every Saturday and we work out and we just, we're just holding a vibe. And they were, and yeah, they couldn't believe it. They like, they really couldn't believe it. And it was just like, but at the same time, I hear you. Like, you know what I mean? Um, these, these young men didn't know about Lycra and, um, <laughs> Bright, bright colour spandex, you know what I mean? They were, they were, in, Nike, they were in Nike and Adidas tracksuits with leather gloves on. It wasn't I mean? the Mr Motivator thing the police were used to, you I know, guess. You know what I mean? So it, I, I, it is what it is, do you know what I mean? Until, yeah. you know, until we have a conversation, you never know. Yeah. Um, I remember the council in the park um, invited us to a meeting in Brockle Park. And um, I went down to the meeting with a few of the guys I was working out with. And um, we just explained what we're doing and what we want to do and, you know, the, the mm -hmm. impact that this is making in the community and the, just, the, just the changes um, bringing in the community of Brixton and Lambeth. Mm -hmm. And if people coming together every Saturday, I just, I just, I just let them know, it's, you guys are complaining about so many people in the park and you're sending police to come and watch us, but what would you rather the young people do? Be on the estate and the block or just come here for the hour? Mm. Come here for that that hour of peace and the hour of well not peace we put them through hell <laughs> but uh, that, that hour sergeant. of working out and just, you, you know what it is it was all conversations of just growth and bettering themselves like I said and it was just like everyone there it was just it was energy that's mm. all I can explain to is the energy it was activity do you know what I mean um, I was thinking, all right, cool. Then no, we ain't got Lycra, we ain't got all of that. But you know what? I'm gonna get some t-shirts printed. So I got some money together and I printed loads of blue and red t-shirts. I just wanted to colourful up the place. Amazing. So, um, everyone got t-shirts. Um, we just asked for donations of like tenner off everyone. And um, yeah, man, it was it was it was good. It grew, it grew, it grew. We, um, I ended up getting qualified as a personal trainer. Um wow. I got a few of my boys who were training with me, helping me out with the little sessions every Saturday, qualified as PTs. And um, yeah, man, we ended up doing risk assessments and we got health insurance. Uh, was it health insurance? Liability insurance, sorry, for the yeah, session. that's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we, we were just doing bits and bobs and it, it just grew from there, man. It was, it was powerful. It was powerful. And then, yeah, we got offered a space. That's amazing. Space. Yeah, we got offered a space because we was taking up too much of the park and messing up the grass, as they said. <laughs> people need role models man young people I, you know we're closing down of places and you taking that bull by the horns and now you have your own entry point for people as a whole to you know orbit in and be together in I think like you know it's 
great that there's people like you that inspire. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I know there are Michael Jordan comparables out there, and I know that, you know, the world isn't short of inspiring characters, but when you, when you get like a certain cultures, like drill music, that, that you know, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that everyone's, you know, drill ministers doing an amazing job. There's, you know, there, there are, there are some awesome acts out there, but, but the narrative, the the stereotype that is super important that there's role models like yourself, man, you know? Come on, bro. Blessings, man. You know, and, and like I said, you know, um, it's, you know, all the, all the appreciation is appreciated, you know, Mm. and it is, it's, it, it helps to keep on going. You know, mm-hmm. it helps uh, say, Raj, you know what? This is really making an impact, right? Even if we're making an impact in one person's life, one at a time, you know? Oh, and yeah. by step, you know, it's, it's, it's not a race. It's not, oh, yes, I'm this person. I stand for this. I'm the, yeah, no, it's not the, It's not a race. It's not a competition. That's we're right. all trying to make an impact and we're all using our talents and we're all using the attention that we, we gain to do mm-hmm. good, you know, yeah. and, not, not to self-glorify, not to, to self, you know, self. It's just for selfless. Yeah. You know? and I feel like this is this is how we grow. This is how we grow as a community. This is how we grow communities, and this is how we make impact in communities. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's a, you're self-serving to the, the culture and the community. That's really what it's all about, isn't it? Come on. Yeah, I'm all about that. So the book. We'll have this out in time. I really, really hope the best for it, man. I have no doubt whatsoever. Judging by your manoeuvres, the way you operate, there's going to be nothing but love coming through, through to you for that book, man. Lessons, man. You know, let, let, let God, let the universe, you know, let it put it out there. And I, I hope people who don't read to get to pick up a book and pick up that book or, yeah, it could be a start. Pick up that book, read it, read my story, see where I've come from. Mm. see what I've been through see where I am now you know um, you know, right. I'm at peace with my past I'm at peace with the present and I'm at peace of what's to come you know so I, I give thanks for it all and I embrace it all mm. and I just want everyone to embrace your story embrace embrace your journey embrace your process because it's going to continue to make you who you are you going to come out of this time whatever storm you have mm. I feel that I feel that, brother. Lessons, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Joel Lewis inside the place. Thank you so much for hanging in on there, brother. Thank you. Oosh, oosh. <laughs> Killer Keller podcast at it again. All right. Don't forget, subscribe. Television app is in full effect. Sharing is caring, so make sure you're part of it. Stay lucky, people. All right. Peace. <laughs>